well, since my brother was a star athlete, I took on the role, I guess, of the dork in the family. I was a tom tomboy, of course. I was, I was the quiet one. <laughs> I rode motorcycles. I uh, spent a lot of time on a family farm that wasn't too far from Amarillo. Because we were in Denver, we did a lot of outdoor things like hike, a lot of hiking and going up in the mountains, skiing, a lot of skiing. So I played hockey, I played football, and I played basketball. Um, don't know if I played any of them well. I not, was not necessarily into sports. I definitely had a more creative side to me. My mom was a piano teacher, so I played piano growing up, and then when I was old enough to to choose to leave the piano behind, I started playing trumpet. I always remember being different. And I remember very vividly that I knew from a very young age that there was a part of me I couldn't talk about. A little scary, a little strange, didn't really understand it, but kind of knew it, it was the right thing for me. I felt like people were starting to view me differently. I felt very self-conscious about the way that I felt and I wasn't really sure where I fit in. I was best friends with all the girls in, in elementary and in middle school and even high school. So I think then I kind of knew that Something was a little bit different. And I knew I was attracted to other girls. But back then it was, it's a phase. It's a phase, you know, she's going through that. They're just playing house or whatever. Most time girls look at guys and they're like, he's so cute. And I never had that reaction. I always looked at girls and I was just like, wow, she's so pretty. <laughs> and she put me in this, pink, in this pink frilly dress and I was just, oh, I was so upset. I just cried and cried because I knew that dress wasn't me. And why was she putting me in this dress? It, it was humiliating for me to be in this Easter dress. I wanted to be Batman. You know, I wanted to be Spider-Man and I wanted to go and, 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 and rescue, you know, one of the, the Charlie's Angels. So that was what I was dealing with inside of me. chair I sat in and I said, hey, Mom, I've got something to tell you. And I told her about um, my girlfriend in college. I had friends who would come out and they had gotten thrown out of their houses or they faced other obstacles. I knew that if I didn't tell them, I would lose them because my life was going to go on. And I remember feeling so lonely and I couldn't go home for Christmas. And I thought, you know, I'm just sick of this. I'm sick of this. I, you know, I know they know. I wrote my parents and my sister both letters, you know, coming out and telling them I was gay and I'm safe and I'm, you know, what have you and I love you. My daddy looked at me and said, we already know. <laughs> and my mom said, it's okay. And I was like, I know y'all know, but we don't talk about it. I want us to be able to talk about it. I want to be able to share with my life. So that was really the first time we started kind of openly talking about things. And from then it was just um, all those years of having to be quiet and never being honest and never being able to uh, share good things or bad things, all that kind of disappeared. And from then on we had a new relationship and I was kind of fully embraced in the family. You know, the names that they would call me would be faggot or uh, joto, which means faggot in Spanish. And you, you realize that you're part of that group that's, that's hated and uh, ostracized and um, you're told that, that those people are going to hell. It was pretty brutal. I mean, getting off the school bus and getting spit on, having I, one kid took a hole punch, started punching holes in my shirt one afternoon. Another kid, I was sitting on the bus and he wanted to sit there. He started beating me up on the school bus. And, you know, it was silent looks out a window, crying. But I got through it. It was so difficult, I contemplated suicide. It was so difficult. I remember when I was in high school, I remember when I was in college, there were some very difficult times where I felt like it would be so much better if it was just over.
I started college. You know, one of my best friends, a guy named Mark, um, I met, you know, the first year of college. And uh, he, uh, you know, was quite obviously was gay, you know, and, uh, and so we both kind of struggled with that, you know, adjusting to college life, being gay students and stuff. And um, he went home for Christmas break that Christmas and he committed suicide. And, uh, sorry, sorry. Um, you know, I just wish that I could go back in time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I could go back in time and tell him, please don't do that. That your life will be so much better if you just stick it out. You know, I kind of thought if you grow up gay, you're gonna be alone for the rest of your life, taking your mom to the opera at, you know, 60. I would have never imagined or dreamed that my life could be what it is today. Instead, now I have this beautiful wife and the two most wonderful little girls that you could ever imagine. And I'd never thought having a family and having children was something that I would that I could do, that, that would be available to me. I never thought that I would get to be a mom. And that, to me, was the uh, heartbreak about being gay. It's very normal, you know, we go to work, we come home, cook supper, eat supper together, watch TV, um, talk and share what happened during the day, go to bed to get up the next morning and do it again. We argue about, okay, who paid this bill, who didn't pay that bill, we forgot this, we forgot that, we need to go to the grocery store, we need laundry detergent, you know, who's going to get home first to feed the dogs. I sound like my parents when I, we, we talk, I sound just like my parents, you know. They send him Christmas cards, birthday cards, um, every time I speak with my mother or my grandmother or my sister, they ask about him. We're married by mortgage, I like to say. Um, <laughs> that's our that's our legal binding document. Uh, what what no man can put asunder, the bank can. We are the modern family. Uh, we did it before Cam and Mitch and, and Lily. <laughs> right before I came down here, I was pounding out the uh, agenda for the PTA meeting tonight because you know that's what I do, and uh, it's it's remarkably normal. It's remarkably normal, and it's it's wonderful. My husband is wonderful. He's uh, very sweet and loving and just a great person. And she's wonderful. Yeah, she's very loving and very kind and uh, just planning to live her life in the country with me. She's a, a city slicker, so this is all new to her. And, that, and that's the best part of it is somebody who doesn't want to change you, who takes you, you know, even when you're grumpy and in a bad mood or stressed out or whatever the situation may be. Um, someone who loves me just for myself and the best part of it is I never feel alone. A month ago yesterday Judith and I were married in New York State. Something in my lifetime I never thought I would see happen or be able to do. Just take a deep breath and give it another day. And keep giving it another day. Because to do anything else will deny you the opportunity to have happiness that is as deep as your pain is today. You're not going to be 12, 14, 16 years old forever. Before you know it, time is going to change. And uh, there's, there's a saying that uh, the people that mind don't matter and the people that matter don't mind. Keep searching, keep looking, keep hoping, keep praying. Just if you're not in the, in the place that you want to be right now, just realize that there is a place for you in this world. And If you are rejected by your family or your friends, there are others out there who will welcome you with open arms. Um, you just haven't met them yet, but you will. 
and you will find someone who loves you and that that person who loves you and that you become a partner with you know will just create your whole world for you and uh, and that just is so wonderful it's a wonderful human experience we all have a story you know I, I tell people my story it's a wonderful story some of the chapters in my in my story are ugly I wish I could erase them I wish they didn't exist in, in the in the in the book of my life but they're there but I get to choose how my story ends. And it's your choice. You choose how your story's gonna end. Hello, I'm Mike Rawlings, mayor of the city of Dallas. The author Scott Peck wrote in his book, The Road Less Traveled, wrote in his first line that life is painful. It's true. We all experience a lot of pain in our life. I believe that the best days can be in front of you. You've got to believe in yourself. God gave you some very special gifts. The future is great because you can be a great business person, a great artist. Shoot, you can work in the city of Dallas. And we're proud of what we do in the city of Dallas because we embrace diversity. Being different is a good thing here, not a bad thing. And I think telling people that might be interested in working with us that it's a good place to work, we're an accepting workforce, we're a safe workforce, that you can be yourself in our workforce is an important message to relay. It's a safe place to be and you can make a difference in your community here. And that, that's why I like working here. Um, I would like everybody to feel that way about it. As a city employee, I've, I've been embraced wonderfully from my peers and my uh, co-workers, uh, you know, who have become my friends. And I feel accepted, and I feel supported, uh, and I feel um, that it's a very supportive environment that other people support you, no matter what your story is, you know, what your, your race, your culture, your gender, your background, your, your religion, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. It's the best place in the world to be, especially if you're gay.